A month has passed since the release of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's first photos of the Apollo sites. Over that period, my video dealing with this topic has received record hits and received more comments than any previous video released by me. Even in the past month since the release of my video, I still have not had time to read them all. But I have been able to hear out a lot of the messages, further analyse the photos from LRO, and establish what we know and what we can prove. Of course, it will take way too long to address all the points in one video, and I like to be thorough. So this will be the first in a series of videos in which we have another look at the newest photos of the alleged Apollo landing sites. I'm sure a lot of you may remember the photos from Clementine, which showed a dark splotch, supposedly the disturbance caused by Apollo 15's descent engine plume as it spread out across the moon dust. Man. Okay, you sit in the Falcon is on the plane at Hadley. With the release of the LRO photographs, various people have wrote in to ask, if this photo shows the Apollo 15 landing site, where is the oh-so-obvious disturbance that the propagandists have hyped about? Let's see if we can find it. First of all, it is important to note that the Clementine photographs were recorded in the ultraviolet spectrum. This is why the splotch comes out black. If these images were photographed in the visible light spectrum, the anomaly would have come out much brighter. According to the Space.com article that this photo was printed in, the anomaly is within a 165 foot 50 meter to 490 foot 150 meter radius around the landing site. Knowing this information, we can take the high resolution of the Apollo 15 landing site and zoom down so that the image is 500 meters across. Because the splotch was at most 150 meters across, it should show up in this magnification. So where is this bright anomaly that was supposedly caused by the engine plume spreading out across the surface? The only brightness that one can see is coming from these two enormous craters nearby. Hey, wait a minute! Didn't we establish earlier that the dark splotch seen in the Clementine photo corresponds exactly to the location of a bunch of impact craters that were already there before the Apollo 15 landing, as was proven by the Lunar Orbiter spacecraft? For further proof, we also decided to compare these new LRO photos with the photos released by JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. The Japanese claim that their Cellini spacecraft also discovered evidence of disturbance left by Apollo 15's descent plume. They hyped that this bright halo was the disturbance in question. JAXA released these two images of the same location. If this halo was caused by the engine plume spreading out across the dust, Falcon's descent stage should be located somewhere within this halo. Let's compare the image on the left with the photo from LRO. Watch now as we switch the images. The landscape is obviously the same, but the bright halo is clearly located nowhere near the alleged lunar module. Instead, this bright portion corresponds exactly to where the bright craters are located. Now let's compare the image on the right. Here, the Japanese have made it so easy for us, as they've outlined the area of interest. You can see, clear as day, that the lunar module is located on the outer edge of the anomaly. You can even notice how the supposed shadow cast by the lunar module crosses over the borderline. Most importantly, once again, the halo corresponds exactly to where these large impact craters are located. There is no way that this halo had anything to do with the lunar module's engine plume. Hey, given that the halo exists because of natural craters, 
Maybe that's why there are so many halos located in the landing site photos. Because the halo and the so-called lunar module are clearly two separate entities, we can only conclude that the LEM photographed by LRO is either a boulder or was composited into the image. NASA might have had a better case if they photoshopped the LEM here. Either way, thanks to JAXA, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is not the lunar module. Why do we know? Because there is no halo surrounding it. And all propagandists and scientists agree that the disturbance caused by the engine bloom should be very noticeable. Even Bill Casing agreed along these lines. On page 188 of his book, he wrote, The burning of these propellants, plus the dust cloud raised by the jet blast, might have been visible from Earth. Alternatively, the propellants might have combined explosively with even greater effect. Placing them below the surface could have produced a giant cloud of moon dust which might have been detectable from Earth. Further, if the plume was so powerful that it caused a disturbance visible from orbit, you would expect this disturbance to be visible in the actual surface photographs. How can they possibly see a spot that's 20 years old from something that, if you look at the photographs, made zero, no blast crater at all. It made no disturbance whatsoever. Yet 20 plus years later, they can find this spot? Well, How finding do they this... find this spot? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, we know where they landed. I mean, it... I know <laughs> that they, we know where they landed, but we have very clear photographic evidence of, of, the, of the lunar module sitting on the surface of the moon with no disturbance. Yet you can see this somehow or another, this invisible disturbance from space 20 years later? That seems a little weird. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying that there's no disturbance on the surface. I'm saying there's no blast crater. The dust what? was removed from that spot. Yeah. But very, the dust is not the lunar module. It looks so like what am I missing? Happened. Okay, when he keeps asking over and over okay, again. Okay, what I'm, I'm not hearing. Let's all get into this. Yeah, Come on. I don't know why he's <laughs> standing it will help. He didn't say it okay. <laughs> he is saying that uh, there is not a discernible blast crater. You've explained why there isn't. And then he's saying, but then you turn around and say, on the Clementine images, we see a disturbance. How come we can't see the disturbance at the time it happened, and yet we can see it 20 plus years later? A large Is that disturbance good? 20 plus years later. Okay. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any dust blown around or anything happens whatsoever to the very clear, high resolution photographs of the underneath the lunar module. Now, why can't we see the dust disturbance at the time, but only 20 we plus years later? We don't see nothing. Later? You well, see nothing. Nothing. It looks exactly the same. No, no, no. When you, if you actually look at a lot of the pictures, well, of course, you can't take a picture of the landing spot before they landed. We, we don't have that technology, so we only have pictures after the lunar lander was there. And when you look under the the, the landers, you can see sort of these uh, these black radial streaks from the surface being scorched a little bit by the by I the. I don't uh, see that anywhere. That's in that's in one of the pictures, I believe. I've, I've looked seen at it. every single one of them. I don't, I've never seen anything <laughs> well, I might, remotely okay, close to that. Okay, I might be wrong. We know that the lunar module's 3,000 pound thrust engine should have left a blast crater in the surface. It didn't. We know that it should have blown away any loose dust directly under the engine bell. It didn't. And as all propagandists have insisted, we know the lunar module's engine should have left a disturbance visible from outer space. Now, Thanks largely to NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we can emphatically say that it didn't. There are still millions who believe it was actually a hoax. Well, within the last hour, NASA has launched two new probes to the moon aboard this rocket, and one of the objectives will be to take pictures that could settle the argument once and for all. It had frequently been hyped that LRO would prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Apollo missions were real. But so far, it has been proving the exact opposite. Better luck next time, propagandists.